remember being a fan of Arlo Guthrie, thinking someday he's going to get it. And then I learned years later that he may not get it. And in fact, he never did get right. it. At what point did you get tested? And what made you want to get tested? Well, what happened is I, I went to West Virginia and was spent about two months with my mom. And after spending that time with her, it kind of started, you know, I started questioning, you know, am I going to ha have this? You know, do I have this disease? Mm -hmm. So the following year, I decided to go and get tested for it. So what happened was when I went and got tested, you know, the, you go in and, you know, there's a neurologist that sees you. So you, the, you go through the, this whole, uh, you know, neurology appointment, uh, and then you go over to a genetics counselor and she asks a, a bunch of questions. Um, and what they do is they're basically trying to get a, a family history of the disease. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened is after I do that, you know, then you go and you get a simple blood test. And, and then Were they're looking for the genes? Or? Yeah, correct. So what happens is after that, it's like it was the longest two week wait of my life. So, yeah. I mean, it seemed like, you know, I, every day I was going through a, a roller coaster of emotions, you know, mm. be high, you know, happy one day and then sad and depressed the next day. And it was just, yeah, it was, it was very difficult for me. The days that you were happy, was it because on those days you were thinking optimistically like, oh, it's, it's not going to come back positive. Or was it more that you were just being able to put it out of your mind sometimes? I think it was just me trying to put it, put it out of my mind at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what happens is, you know, when you go, when you finally have to go through that door to find out, you know, the truth, you know, now, the, now it's real. When you go through the door of getting the test right. and getting the results of the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's like that's know, a door no one wants to go through. Right, exactly. So it's like yeah, you know, I I could you know I could prepare myself, you know, all I wanted, but you know now it's real. Mm. So, and basically what happened is I went in there and she told me that I had uh, forty three repeats and that I had inherited the gene from my mom. What is forty three repeats referred to? Uh, there's the, basically what they do is they do. Um, uh, Test on your. They have CAG repeats. There's these tests that they do, and uh, f 40 to 40 and above, you will have symptoms. Uh -huh. 30. There's uh, kind of like a gray area between 31 and 39, mm -hmm. where you know you may not have it, and you could possibly, but you could possibly pass it on to you know. Uh, a family member. Pass it on, but you may not be symptomatic. Right. So, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I get this devastating news. 40, 43? 43, yeah. It's, it's not, believe me, it's not as bad as some people, you know. Um, what, what I had done after my mom passed, I, I had her tested, so I know what her repeats are. And that's, uh, her repeats are 46. She it's, had 46 repeats, and the level of repeats, the number of repeats mm -hmm. indicates how severe you how symptomatic you're going right, to be right right but the thing is i have to keep telling myself that you know i mean as bad as it is you know it's you know i i, I know i'm i know i could be a lot worse than some of my friends mm -hmm. you know uh some of them you know have, are have already died that were my age mm -hmm. some of them uh, are in nursing homes uh already you know who are my age or younger um how did you meet all these Make all these friends who have Huntington's. Uh, there's a support group that meets every Thursday, third Thursday of um, the month in Mill Valley. Mm. And I've been going to that one for about 15 years now. And it's run by Andrea Zanko, who is the, also the genetics counselor that, mm. at uh, UCSF, who gave me my news. Um, and it's, it's a very, it, it, I, I need that. I need to have that. So you, you entered that support group 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And what stage were you at then? Oh, I was, I just found out that I had tested positive. Uh -huh. So, yeah. so, you know, I, I, I was, I was um, gene positive is what you would say. Right. Because I wasn't symptomatic at that point, but I knew my status. So it's fortunate there was a support group because mm -hmm. I imagine 
getting such a devastating diagnosis, you would want to be around other people who, who know from personal experience mm. what you're going through. That was definitely a, a, a plus. Um, it's, I mean, it's just being able to you know, talk to these people and yeah, you don't have to explain anything to them, you know, because exactly. they know they've been to it. Yeah. yeah. So it's very powerful. Yeah. Um, I did not, though. Um, I did not deal with it very well, though. For the first probably month, you know, it was just I just felt like numb, you know, I just which is exactly how most people feel mm -hmm. when getting a devastating diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And what happened is while I'm, you know, I feel I feel this way and it's just like, yeah, you know, I uh, there was I remember one night I was uh, I was at my friend's house. They were letting me sleep on their couch. Well, I wasn't really sleeping. I was just more or less staring at the ceiling, you know, trying to sleep. And I, went, and I started thinking, you know what, life? You can kick me around until the end of the month. And then after that, I'm going to start taking my, my life back. So, so what, what happened? Eventually, I started to, like, get out of my funk. Uh -huh. uh, I wrote a complaint letter to life saying that I wasn't happy with, the, it, with its job performance. Where did, where did you mail it to? <laughs> <laughs> But, so you were pretty <laughs> self-aware yeah. to be able to see that mm -hmm. you weren't really taking charge of your life. You were allowing the disease to victimize you. Mm -hmm. And you decided you really wanted to master your life and be in charge of it. Very you true. wanted to be in full control of your life. Right. Very true. Yeah. And Do you think maybe that new attitude uh, allowed you to maybe do better with the disease. Yes, I, I believe so. Uh, that was something that I realized that you know if I, I if I was going to di you know if I was going to live with this disease, I wanted to be as positive as I could with it. I r figured you know these were this was the hand I was dealt in life, and you know so this is the hand I got to play. Yeah. So what happened was um, it got me interested in going and doing. Ed educating basically students, so I started speaking at. Uh, so, what motivated you to do that? Uh, actually, a friend of mine, uh, my uh, Andrew Zanko, my genetics counselor, mm -hmm. who talked to me about it. She said, "You know what? We, I've been approached um, by the folks here at the university, and they are." This is a medical school. This is at University of California, San Francisco. Yeah, University yeah. of California, San Francisco Medical Center. Yes. Yep. So these are medical students. Yeah. Yep. So uh, they were approached. She was approached by one of the, the instructors there about having someone with Huntington's disease come in and talk. Mm. So I was like, "All right, this yeah sounds good to me. Let's do it." Mm. So sounds good to you. Let's do it because well, but here's the thing. Okay, I, I was really petrified, but my thing is, I'm a, I'm doing a film. Okay, on Huntington's disease. So at some point, I'm going to have to go and talk to people. So I figured, well, I might as well, you know, you know, get get it in, you know, start practicing right now. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, yeah. I mean, it was terrifying for me. Believe me, the first time that I did it, because you weren't used to public speaking. Oh, not or... at all, not at all. And also, was it also because you were revealing, really revealing yourself? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's. I, when I do these talks, I try to be as open as I can be. You know, I try to just let it all, uh, you know, let it all hang out. So, mm -hmm. you know, if if I'm if I'm having a good day, I'll tell tell them. If I'm having a bad day, I'll I'll, I'll tell them. Yeah. So I'm, I try. And this is very different from medical students just going to hear a lecture from a professor right. Right. about Huntington's right, disease. Right. Right. Yeah, because what happens is they they actually get to it, talk. I talk to them and answer their questions. I'm just curious how having the disease affects your social life.